from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the podcaster who is here. I've got on, um, I've got on ankle socks, uh, I don't know why I decided to point that out. I just, like I said, wait a second, I have ankle socks. Are those what they're called? They're above my ankle, so. Uh, but, uh, oh, I also have shorts on. I don't know what made me wear my socks. Uh, maybe the fact that they're wool running socks and I didn't wear them running. But uh, they say they're, these, these, oh no, these socks are darn tough. Some socks are smart, made of wool, and they're smart. And these ones are made of wool, and they're darn tough. But you might might say, what, like, what in the S-O-C-K-S are you talking? And you say, I put a U in there. Uh, and I'd say, great, because I'm here for you, to put you to sleep. Uh, that's what this is, sleep with me, the podcast to put you to sleep. But really, I just keep you company while you fall asleep. I'm here to be your friend in the deep, dark night. Because you deserve a bedtime. You deserve a friend in, that's going to keep you company while you fall asleep. I'm just here to take your mind off of stuff and talk to you in the most boring uh, way possible to be a friend in the deep dark night because I've been there. Hundreds of thousands of other people have been there too that are listening right now. And we know it's not easy. That's why I make the show. And I hope it works for you. It does take a few tries to get used to. So if you're new, give it a few tries, see how it goes. Uh, It's just a friendly, strange podcast. This episode, I think, will be particular. You know, I'm always strange, but uh, this one's even stranger. Um, what else we got? Uh, oh, structure the show. So we've got a support for the show coming up. That's how it comes out free twice a week. Then a long meandering intro. Do not miss out on it. It's meant to ease you into bedtime and keep you company. Uh, then after that, we'll have a bedtime story. It'll be one of the, it'll be a, it'll be, it'll be a, a, interesting. So I don't know the difference between machine learning and AI. I'm not kidding. Uh, But once upon a time, we had this machine learning thing. We paid a company that had some sort of machine that could learn. And it was trying to make machine transcripts. uh, Works out way better with our real-world transcriptionist, Leah. But this is when our budget was way, way tighter. So uh, we're going to have a guest come on from the Kuzak family and, and read through this automated transcript. And that one, their initials just happen to be AI. So that's handy. Though, so, like, uh, I guess they're AI, something. I didn't ask, I said, wouldn't, wouldn't your AI see if you're a Kuzak? Uh, but they said their initials are AI. Maybe they didn't say all their You say, what in the initially I disliked you. Now I'm not so sure. I said, great. So glad you're here. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that's here to keep you company and put you to sleep. And these are the ways we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots, and I could really use your help. We're doing our yearly annual survey, and I'd be so grateful if you could take a few minutes and answer the survey. You could go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash survey. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash survey, S-U-R-V-E-Y. Fill out the survey, and there's a box uh, towards the end where you could put in your thoughts about the show. So if there's anything you really wanted to let me know, you know, something you want more of, you're looking for something a little bit different. I I don't know. Let me know right in that box. Like, give me your feedback, but please take the time to fill out that survey. It's so useful for the health and long-term sustainability for the show. So fill that out at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash survey. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash survey. Thanks, everybody. Support for Sleep With Me comes from Odoo. If you feel like you're wasting your time and money with your current business software or just want to know what you could be missing, then you need to join the millions of other users who switched to Odoo. Odoo is the affordable all-in-one management software with a library of fully integrated business applications that help you get more done in less time for a fraction of the price. To learn more, visit odoo.com slash with me. That's O-D-O-O dot com slash with me. Odoo, modern management made simple. 
All right, everybody, it is time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Helix Sleep. And I want to know what mattress you get matched with. Go to helixsleep.com slash sleep and take that two-minute quiz and then check out which model of Helix you want to get because Helix has got this new collection, Helix Elite. They also have mattresses for big and tall sleepers, even a mattress just for kids. And if you take that Helix quiz, you can find the mattress best for you and your body or you and your partner body. And that personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a mattress than in your own home, in your own bed. That's why they offer a 100 night trial and a 10 to 15 year warranty to test out your new Helix mattress. And the reason they have so many different mattress models to choose from and that handy dandy quiz to match you with the right one. You know, they got models with memory foam for optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side, more responsive foam to cradle your body for stomach and back sleepers, and hand cooling features to keep you from overheating at night and every helix mattress has a hybrid design individually wrapped steel coils premium foam layers perfect combination of comfort and support and like i said i sleep on my side i sleep on my stomach i like to sleep cool and that's how i got matched with the helix dusk i picked the helix dusk Lux, and i love this mattress i cannot do, do, but you you could find the best mattress for you by taking that helix mattress quiz set up as fast and easy come straight to your door delivered in a box for free helix mattresses all come with a 10 to 15 year warranty depending on the model and helix is offering 20 percent off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners you go to helixsleep.com sleep this is their best offer yet it won't last long with helix better sleep starts now that's helixsleep.com sleep and you can take the quiz for free i don't know what you're waiting for uh because i'm sleeping so good i want you to sleep so good too so take that quiz let me know what you got thanks everybody uh hey everybody it's time for the sleepy supporter zone the one part of the podcast and need you here it's where i pop my peas if you please i thank the listeners who are supporting the show so we can be here for free for you twice a week and uh like uh, some people that support the sponsor support the show directly or buy our merch particularly sleep phones and only way we could get credit is if you use our link sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones uh because sleep phones is part of our merch kind of uh, not a sponsor uh, so please please use that link and i wanted to thank lois who got some sleep phones and let me know about it let them know about it thank you so much lois uh could not do it without uh people like you uh supporting us so thank you so much if you want to be on the sleepy supporter zone support a sponsor let them know about it let me know about it get some merch support the show in some way and uh, let me know about it. Use a contact form on our website or even better, use a, a, a link on our sponsor page so I can thank you like Lois. Uh, second part of Sleepy Support Zone is you getting the support you need right now. If you're in need of extra resources right now, you're having a tough time, including international resources, including text-based resources, use the links in our show notes. It's about being a part of positive change, being a part of community, taking action, and uh, not just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying Stop AAPI Hate, not just saying support Ukraine, not just saying things, but taking action. And I know this is a really tough time and I don't want to like keep anybody up, uh, but why is it important for me to talk about what's going on in the world? You know, maybe you would check it if you, if you want to like a more, uh, substantive version you could check out pete davidson's youtube uh, on youtube or whatever his saturday night live monologue probably says it better than i can but it's similar why should a sleep podcast talk about uh, what the real world is because the two things really are inseparable and if you want to take some action right now uh to to be a part of change as tough as that seems it may be as painful as some of for for a lot of you as it might seem uh you know ruth bader ginsburg uh, talked about one of her favorite uh organizations is hand in hand and I'm just read part of a statement from hand in hand is that raising children to see the humanity in one another is the only way to change our world it is the only path to ensure our collective fate be one of safety peace and equality for all and you can learn more about hand in hand and support hand in hand directly uh, through the link in our show notes or just google it you know and learn more uh, but that's what the sleepy support zone is all about because we're part of a, a, commu- a lot of communities here and we're part of one community too right on the 
this planet. So it is important for me to talk about it in the most respectful and calmest way I can. But it's really more important than talking. It's about supporting organizations like Hand in Hand. So that's what the Sleepy Supporter Zone is all about. Oh, Mystery Bart, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are this they? Posty poster song. Sounds like a near fall. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes too. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team. Bat is down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at Jonathan Man. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story and you see the kindness shine straight on through when the listeners form their own facebook group keith stacy sarah julie and jennifer these are your moderators get support dear scooter on patreon buy the merch and support the sponsors you can find anything you want at sleep with me podcast.com and we're so proud Thanks, Mystery Bart. Don't forget the most comfortable way to listen to Sleep With Me. And the only way you can get the Sleep With Me versions and we can get credit is to use our link, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleepphones, and use Sleep With Me to get five bucks off your order. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome this is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. It could be thoughts that you're thinking about, about the past, present, the future. So thoughts on your mind, uh, thinking thoughts, uh could be feelings, anything emotionally related to those thoughts or emotions that are just there, like remaining from the day or the evening or the afternoon. You know, the book Remains of the Day, that's when I'm like, I finally read, I have not seen the film yet, but I've read the book. Uh, so I know, even though part of my brain wants to say, how come there isn't like part two Remains of the Afternoon or Remains of the Evening? And I'd say that just doesn't work. That's why. I mean, I wish it worked even as a tangent, but it doesn't. Uh, I mean, my thoughts they and feelings and physics, it could be physical sensations. My, my thoughts and feelings, though, that remains, always remains, remaining always. Always is something there to remind me, too, uh, about, uh, about things. You say, wait a second, like especially at bedtime. I don't know what that song was about, but was that at bedtime? No, that was about, I think, like a lost love. But at bedtime, my my thoughts, they're always there to remind me about something. That's a different, that would be a different song. And and they, they want it, they actually want credit. To, who else is there always there to remind you about something? And I, I'd say, after all, I don't know. Uh, You'll, and then I say, I do say, well, and they, no, they, they say, and we'll always be a part of thee. Holy cow. Went off top. I didn't expect to go that far off top, topic into Yacht Rock. Not sure if that's Yacht Rock. I'm not even sure. I'm not kidding who sing. Like right now, I'm just trying to make a sleep podcast. Uh, and suddenly a tangent appeared. What was that? Oh, like thoughts, feelings, physical sensations. It could be ch times, chimes. It could be chimes. Holy cow. Talk about something that'll keep you awake. Chimes. Uh, that, that was another, uh, that was another tangent I've gone on. But previous tangents, previously on tangents by Scooter, I did try to come up with, a, a, like, bed chimes and broom. I don't know what, I don't know. I didn't, because there's a book. Well, I don't know if it was a book, but it was a movie, probably two or three versions of it, I'm guessing. But maybe it was only made once. And it's a movie I get mixed up with Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I don't know why. I just, those two movies are, even though I think I recently tried to watch it in the last three years with my daughter, that's called Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. 
Um, it's on, I think it's on Disney Plus. I think that's where we wanted, we were going to try to watch it. I think the beloved Angela Lansbury's in it too. Though I've been wrong, you know, I've been wrong about a lot of things. But bed chimes, I don't know what it would be. Bed chimes, bed chimes and broomsticks. Um, that wouldn't. I mean, it, it does like it's alliterative, uh, like bed knobs and broomsticks, bed chimes. And boo sticks, but I don't think a boo stick is actually something that exists. Uh, like if you had, if you were watching the Mighty Boosh and you had hiccups, you could say bed chimes and boosh hicks, uh, but that would be a stretch. Uh, so yeah, I'm trying to stretch my pointless meanders and superfluous tangents because I send my voice across the deep dark night. And I use the lulling, soothing tones and pointless meanders uh, to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff so that you could fall asleep. Uh, and the w- w- way that works is my voice is not traditionally soothing. I never, I have trouble getting to the point. I, I tend to go on and on and on about nothing or almost nothing. You say he, he almost, he does have a point. Uh, he's, he is mixing up a, uh, Chitty chitty, chitty chitty bang bang, uh, bed knobs and broomsticks, uh, escape to Sugar Mountain, uh, the 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 apple the apple flavored rock candy group. Uh, he's mixing all those things up together because those were things that were out like uh, right as he became aware, of, or but right before he became aware, like before he took uh, Earth, you know, before he landed here on this planet, probably. Uh, from a stork from another universe or something. Oh, but so what is sleep with me? Why would you want to listen? What am I going on and on about? Totally understand. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are skeptical or doubtful or irritated, that is very normal uh, for most sleep with me listeners, particularly when they're new, because this show is very different. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. But it does take some getting used to, because maybe if you're like me and a lot of other listeners, you probably tried a bunch of stuff to fall asleep. You've probably been very frustrated. Maybe you related to that thoughts. My thoughts are always there. They say we're always there for you. Right. To remind me about stuff I don't need to be reminded about at bedtime. Uh, Like, couldn't you, can't you remind me about stuff like when I need it? Uh, and the, I mean, maybe they're just ineffective. They say note to self next time, remind them, well, this is when you need to be reminded. No, I don't. I'm trying to go to sleep. Uh, oh, but so why wouldn't you like the show? Well, it's very different. I mean, maybe you expected something like more like traditionally soothing or traditionally sleepy. So let me explain everything, but let me just tell you, it does take two or three tries to get used to. That's what like hundreds of thousands and hundreds of thousands, probably a million people have told me. And there are some people that'll just never like me or the podcast. That's normal too. So if that's you, uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you has tons of other sleepy stuff you could check out. But why, why is this show so different? Well, or how is it different, I guess? So one of the things, it's a podcast you don't really listen to. You just kind of listen to it, or you could just kind of listen to it. And what that means is that uh, you just kind of, it's almost like elevated background noise. And it's just kind of there running in the background uh, to kind of soothe you in a general way or to kind of distract you, like something like a TV on in the other room or a friend that's on the phone, but you don't feel pressure to pay attention to that friend. You say, I'm going to call you, but I'm not going to listen. I want you to talk, but I'm not going to listen to you. And your friend would be terrific. I got so much to talk about. That's kind of the role I fill. Like you could listen to me at a mumble. You could, you could listen to me though, because that goes for the other thing which is there's no pressure to fall asleep with this show. It's over an hour so that you don't have to worry about falling asleep because I don't put you to sleep. I keep you company while you fall asleep. So that's why I'm here for over an hour. There's people who are listening who who can't sleep or who need a break during the day, and I'm here for them and I'm here for you. I'm here to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar bud, your boar bestie, your neighbor, your boar bruh, your boar burr. 
I thought of another one, but then now I've already forgotten it. Boar cuz, I think I said that one before. Borby, that, I think that was it. I think the, uh, when you're listening to this, that movie may have already come out, the Barbie movie. But I'm more of a Borby. That sounds more like some sort of uh, pouch-based mammal. I don't know if, uh, what are those called? Marsupials, you say. Oh, yeah, that's the least loved marsupial for some reason, the Borby. It, you know, and I say, well, oh, great. Uh, well, I got that. Good. You, Scooch, you do remind me of a Borby. It does make this sound. The Borby is known for, uh, like, uh, for making a sound that's like a creaky, like they call it a creaky tree sound. You see, are we discussing an imaginary, like, our marsupials are mammals, right? My brain just shrugged. Maybe it was like, because I was going to say deep in the outback, but maybe it was once the, uh, mascot. If Outback Steakhouse doesn't have, I mean, I guess you'd say, well, boy, you know, you probably don't want any, uh, like, like, but he say, it just says Outback. I'd say, you don't want to have, a, uh, they say, we found it too confusing. Uh, so you don't want Bor, you're saying that you don't want Borby to be your corporate mascot. Could hand out balloons. You know, kids could take pictures of me and, uh, nobody gets in the pouch, right? We could have, we could pull, we could actually, we could, um, probably shouldn't inflate the balloons in the pouch either. Maybe I could have, uh, if we have warm cookies in my pouch, is that too weird? And you say, get a cookie from Borby. Uh, like each kid gets a warm cookie from Borby. And, you know, we could tell, the cookies could be, you know, wrapped in something. So that, you know, that makes it less strange. Um, just an idea. Or it could just be an imaginary character that I went on to, uh, that, uh, but I, hopefully I'll remember that. So I'm here to be your boar bee, your boar bay, whatever it is, to be your friend in the deep dark night and keep you company, but not put you to sleep. You just fall asleep. And they say, I have no idea what he was talking about. Like, I have a general memory of, like, uh, I don't know, somebody like Christopher Cross, but it wasn't Christopher Cross, uh, and Bloomin' Onions, and that, the, uh, or Christopher Cross said Bloomin' Onion. I think Christopher Cross did say that the first time they heard the podcast. He said, what in the Bloomin' Onion is going on here? And uh, this could be Borby's catchphrase. Blo- that could be the only thing Borby can say, Bloomin' Onion. Bloomin' Onion, you know? I mean, it might be confusing, but the whole thing would be confusing. Like the corp- corporation, the imaginary version of the corporation said, no mascot, said, uh, I see, it really couldn't be that confusing. Uh, like, uh, I don't think. Okay, but anyway, moving on. So this podcast you don't really listen to, you probably won't like it the first couple times you listen. It, uh doesn't put you to sleep, it just keeps you company. What other great news you got for us? Well, if you're skeptical or doubtful, that's normal. Uh, structure of the show also throws people off, but it is very intentional, particularly with the tons of feedback I got uh, uh, in the last few months. So the show starts off with a greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, essential part of the show. So you can feel seen and welcomed in and you say, okay, I could check this podcast out. I do sense it has a tone of welcomeness, but it's made by a person that's like a little bit strange. Uh, so that's the, the, the beginning show. Then there's a support so it can be free. So anybody that's not in a position to listen to support the show can listen whenever they want to over 500 episodes. Uh, support allows us to do that and keep putting it out regularly on, on a weekly basis. Then this is separate from the sport, like which is very important to point out uh, because it's another essential part of the show, which is there's a long meandering intro, which we're like already like 14 minutes into or so. And, and it's a show within a show. It is in a, it, it's optionally essential. So I think that maybe makes essential not true. Mostly essential, I guess I'd say somewhat essential. Or essential, you say, if it's not essential, you'd say it's, it's, uh, but what the intro is, 
is it introduces new people to the podcast uh, in an inefficient way, yes. It's different every single time so that you can't get used to it. Because what I've found, and from all the feedback I've gotten over the 10 years making the show, like that's what doesn't work with a lot of other stuff is that it gets repetitive and then it doesn't work anymore. So the intro is different every single time. And it's also an experiment to say, what's going to come up? I've never, I mean, those things have all come up separately on the show, but never together. All these d- disparate thoughts, I guess. The thoughts that are desperate to, disparate thoughts, desperate to escape me. A little poetry by one of my thoughts as it walked away. Um, that's, that's humbling though. I just had a thought walk out of me. It wrote a, at least it wrote me a poem. So I guess I got to make a gratitude list tonight. Grateful for the thought that left me a poem as it left. And also threw me off when I was trying to make a point. Uh, oh, the, but the intro also goes on and on and on. To ease you into bedtime, having a bedtime routine, even if it's just listening to the intro while you're getting ready for bed, while you're getting into bed, while you're in bed getting comfortable, or you're doing something else relaxing, that's been shown to work, and it's worked for me personally, easing into bedtime. So that's what the intro does. Uh, Then, uh, oh, and there is like 2% of people that skip the intro. They just set their thing to start at 25, 30, 35 minutes. Um, Or there's uh, people that... uh, fall asleep during the intro, which we're very happy for them. But for most people, it's just like a little bit of buffer between the day and and being asleep. So that's the intro. Then again, there's support because podcasting is an opt-in thing. And the great thing about being opt-in to pay for it or to support our sponsors is that it gets to benefit a lot more people. So that's that. And then we'll have like a this interesting reimagination of, I guess, of an old, old episode of Sleep With Me in the 300s. And uh, so we'll have that and then some thank yous at the end. So it's the structure of the show. It's why I make the show. I'm really glad you're here. I work really hard. I yearn and I strive. And I really hope I can help you fall asleep. Thanks for again for coming by. And here's a couple ways I'm able to do this for you for free twice a week. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. What if comparing car insurance rates was as easy as putting on your favorite podcast? With Progressive, it is. Just visit the Progressive website to quote with all the coverages you want. You'll see Progressive's direct rate. Then their tool will provide options from other companies so you can compare. All you need to do is choose the rate and coverage you like. Quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. Hello, everybody. This is AI, and uh, welcome to the AI Sleep Podcast. I'm uh, Albert uh, Irvington. Uh, I'm actually AIC, Albert Irvington Kuzak, if you're, if you're a listener of this, uh, depending on where you're listening to the show. And I'm participating uh, in this AI sleep challenge. Uh, but luckily I have, uh, you know, we're friends with uh, Scooter who makes a sleep with me. And uh, Scooter has given, you know, the Kuzak family uh, is, uh, you know, most of the Kuzak family. You know, Joan and John, they haven't been involved in Sleep With Me, but uh, a lot of other people have. And we're so happy to uh, be able to uh, work with Scooter with uh, some things he's been holding on to for just this occasion. Now, I'm AI. Uh, That's what you could call me, AI, your friend AI. Now, maybe other AI will be, I don't know how they're going to participate in this uh, thing. And this is a a thing that Scooter's been uh, undertaking with urinary uh, machine solutions or something. Urinary sleep solutions? No, machine solutions, my sister's saying. That's my sister, Lorraine Kuzak. Uh, she's po- she's more popular. I've never been on the podcast before. I'm AI, by the way. She said, start acting like it. Uh, so I'm reading from a machine transcript, which I guess would be some sort of, uh, or I don't know if that's artificial intelligence or not. 
in my intelligence is artificial. So I'm going to read through a machine transcript for back from Scooter's episode 392, Erie Canal Museum, and see how it goes. Uh, uh, but I'm pretty sure you get a fair go on your show. You got to go. Sir Leicester, uh, sneakers, uh, and so much more. Love, life, laughter, impalas. Uh, any more but joy. Join two brothers. Oh, this is a promo for a sleep podcast. My brother's sneaker. So we're even getting in. And so I do have permission to paraphrase. My my sisters told me. Uh, okay. Yeah. The, now the, the scooter all, hopefully already did the intro to his own podcast. But uh, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, time for the podcaster, who puts the amateur, amateur in Schaefer sleep uh, with me, the podcast to put sleep in your way. You know, I love it. I love it. I don't even know how to seek a kick quixotic. Uh, you know, I love capital Q quest is uh, Sisyphean. Is that a quest love album he's referring to? You know that one of my hobbies is, is Sisyphean quests. And all I know is I love quix quixotic a sister Sophie and hookum. And I can see if this is in so easily, but that's the other word. But you know, I love Sisyphean style quests, and you know, we tried to get Trader Joe's. How's it going? Oh, this was another promo. Tr Scooter was trying to get uh, Trader Joe's on the podcast or Cat uh, Stevens on uh, WTF podcast. He listened to Father and Son, and he said, I wonder if Mark Maron's ever uh, talked to Cat Stevens. I, I don't know what year this was made, uh, this episode, 392. That that stray cat Stevens on, don't you? So you heard if you were on, you wouldn't want to hear it. Uh, I mean, hear him, hear him and Mark. Uh, I just love to hear those talks. So if you know Cat Stevens, I guess this still goes for things. Uh, let him know. So that's what it is. Chop it up. Hear them chop it up. Uh, so a, uh, uh, but what if, uh, this is interesting, this machine... Probe it up, you know, probe it up, bro. But uh, what if Mark and you, Yusef, uh, but it's spelled capital U S, capital S, capital E, capital F. Okay, so Boulder just rolled back down the whole, old hill sister office. He went to Boulder School to spray water. Okay, then Scooters asks his listeners if uh, he, they think an episode of the Sleep With Me podcast is worth 10 cents to them. Or twenty five cents an episode, depending on how many episodes they listen to. I wonder if he has tried that again. Uh, Patreon, welcome to Time for Sleep with Me the podcast, the shoe you to sleep. We do it a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. Do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place this time. It's during a way over here in an airport where you could set aside whatever's keeping you up at night or whether it's travel, noises, background, physical the sensations, overthinking, you know, emotional feelings that are cropping up. Uh, whatever it is you're trying to take your mind off and use long, longy, soothing tones. I mean, use of soothing tones, it meanders. Overscriptive, turn the mic over. And I'm, tra I'm trying to travel. I'm trying to collect some audio, make the best use of my time. You know, it is also like that dual, dual distraction, dual distraction area dialogue. Double the dual distraction area dial. I can't sleep uh, with uh, sleep with me tonight because this will help me with the time of day go by for me to help the time go by. For you, it gives me something to do. I guess of it, it gets to say, what is your first couple terms here? Let me give you just a little bit of the dose of, you know, the complications that come from overthinking. It could be a daytime head to go out of town here. I go out of town at the last minute and I said, well, jeepers, uh, you know, let's make the best unexpected situation. So I had a lot of editing to catch up with uh, and get her actual podcast, Game of Drones, and Sea Strange, you know. 
and edit the intros out of those and convert the files in these societies, uh, I had to go and get it on head work. So I loaded up my hard drive and my secondary backup hard drive when I had uh, them uh, a bunch of files nicely organized, and then I got ready for my flight. I had it all laid out. Uh, this seems like yesterday. You know, that's going to be handy here. And, you know, I'd really get a lot of work done. This is feeling good. And I said, hey, well, easy. Hey, Scoots, uh, how much would it? Uh, those hard drives don't want to bang around in your bag. You know, you get a ticket and I see how you are. This is uh, this is the inner cheerleader again. Inner, inner electronics protector. I see you're great. So you know what we get those old headphones bags somewhere tucked into one of those shoes, you know, those cabinets. But you're on my team. It's a script. Uh, hit phone bank. Uh, hit phone bank hard drives in there. There. Let's get this cord and send it. You know, coiled up. So boy, we are. This is how people do it. Uh, then zipped up that bag, and they said to me, "I said, what time is this good stuff here? We're getting it. We're gonna go in place." And this item and add my bag and there's my stuff here and I insert a sentence or page in and that's all I can remember. And then, of course, tr for travel the most. So you got your ID and do you have your phone? Do you have a way to charge your phone? I think that's it usually. And I said, what gives my back seat everything essential in my bag, right? Uh, and then I want to do some recording. So I set my microphone in my bag in my recording recorder. The old recording, my bag backup batteries weren't charged, by the way. I found that out, and they said, hey, I said, okay, we got those, and we got those, check, check. I didn't check my bag. This was a mental checklist. Uh, then, of course, you go to get to the airport to get on your flight, and I get down. Let's get down to business, and then... I say, okay, maybe I put the hard drives on the bottom, and then I say... Oh, no, I put them in that headphones bag, and I put them on the abdomen because they were still sitting on the ottoman. But, you know, because I'm awake, I'll just try to record a little bit. Uh, it needs these little layovers or Amy because it's daytime and maybe because it said, okay, it'll be okay. You know, it's going to all be okay with bedtime. Those thoughts can kind of get into your head, and you're knowing you're going to sleep. And you're laying your head down. You're trying to get some rest, and then I'll send you a suitable boy. I can't believe y'all were. Where do you do or say or? Oh, this machine must have been uh, thinking about the next day. Like uh, you're going to. I got to get that hard drive. I got to make sure it's ready. And I was there, uh, and you said, "Well, really, the best way not to forget." And said, well, really, the best way is not to forget. The best way is to prepare for travel and to stay calm and all those things to be rested, you know. But those uh, first, you know, you, I don't know what's it to be like uh, concerned. Uh, we need everything covered. Uh, how are we going to make sure we don't forget everything if we go through all this? Prepare. You know, boy, maybe we should prepare everything will double prepare it triple prepares and you say what did you learn and then the other programs that we weren't sure you know and then you try to get up to, to sleep and then you are uh, like what time do i have to get up for the flight and i'm now why didn't i book on why couldn't i can't sleep on planes when i'm old scoots now that is how my brain works i don't know if you could relate to that but you go through something similar or totally different but as soon as my head hits the pillow, it gets like that, and it can give me more intense, and sometimes it's not not intense at all. And seeing as it's my area of expertise, I can just come in here and see how this Pegasus works. An alternative to listening to those parts of your brain is that I can come in and distract you from the Solomonese, this intro, and some people fall asleep during the intro. Some people don't, but there are these soothing tones, ideally. Remember, they go nice in language, but I try to use my language, and language take my time getting there. And in sit to listen, and all the voice in your head, and you could think about, listen to me.
But obviously, you know, this isn't going to be riveting stuff. I think there was a soap opera once set in an airport, or maybe there should be, or maybe there was a miniseries or something like that. And you know, this is not even, it's like so much more of a soap opera, more soap flakes. And you say it even makes, they don't even make snowflakes, soap flakes anymore. Isn't it more of a soap grainy? You know, where you go back to the soap globes, use globules. Uh, well, you know, globules tend to stick together. But they have these little things that you have to power uh, to as you get your powder you got. Uh, so there's another strategy I use called getting distracted or going off topic. But the whole time you can listen to me. I'm going to be here, maybe, sending my voice across the deep, dark night, my intention to carry you across the threshold from wake to sleep. That's a safe place I'm trying to carve out, and in another layer of the safe places, you only need to kind of listen to me. You don't have to totally listen to me. You don't, you don't have to give me all your attention, and you don't care if you give me your whole attention. You just need to give me some of your attention. You know, now, if you can't fall asleep, I'll be here the whole time, or my neighbor will be, Ray will be, kind of. Distracting you and me, and therefore, you know, kind of like your companion in the deep dark night, your friend. You know, I'll be there, and I'll be there almost like I'm, you know, within a comfortable distance of your bedside, telling you bedtime story just to distract you from your thoughts. So there's no pressure to listen, there's no pressure to your understanding. Which is it? I don't even do it. I don't even attempt at that. Uh, you know, maybe it'll make its way by to Tosa some Rijos. Uh, don't know what those words really mean, but it'll drift in where you say, I'll bring my own meaning, right? You know, if there's also, if you can't sleep, I'll be here kind of entertain you, try to make a funny out to be detracting myself. Maybe there's something that I'm sitting nose, not bad, looking out the window. There's some planes taking off, and there's planes landing. There's people walking a little. And, you know, this intro takes a little bit longer because they pause it when there's those uh, beeping carts go by and when really a lot of people go by. And actually, it was like to carve out my own auditory safe place uh, here because... Uh, I think she's the only place they could find that was a little bit less busy and they didn't have CNN ballasting, so that's what I do. Here's your first times, usually don't. Always record on a vacation. It can be fun when I do, and it gets me a school. And I said, well, you've been scoots and a little distraction sometimes, so I'm glad you're here. I appreciate you stopping by. And I really hope I can help you fall asleep. So thanks again for stopping by. Okay, let's get on with the traveling show. Hey, what do you use for transit and trains traveling? Shows always traveling. You know, because it's distributed in any way, you know. Baby Joe cashes and buys shoes for all his skills. Keep it going. Uh, I'm outside the Erie Canal Museum in Syracuse, New York, and I'm looking at a mural of the old Erie Canal. There's three horses and a man, a barge. Uh, across the river or canal is a red barn or warehouse labeled flour and feed mills. A man is wearing a white shirt with a black and brown suspenders, a black belt in black and brown, black pants. His mouth is open as if he's calling to the horses. Not far behind him is a black dog with blue eyes in a large blue building, Erie Canal Supply and General Store. Front are barrel and boxes, tin roof, six windows, one of those large barn-style windows. And then a long barge, or at least a mural wises barge, long and there's a horse in front. Looking out, I don't know if they're transporting horses. There's a man, and it looks like there's two wheelhouses there. I don't know much about barge artistry. That's why I'm here at the Erie Canal Museum. 
There's a man in a blue suit, looks official, looking out of uh, one little hut or on the barge, you know. We will all house with a stake in a car at a wheelhouse because uh, back at the back end of the barge is, is an old man in the sea looking old man, old man in the canal through. And he's at the wheel, the barge, as we say, sky's blue. Clouds across a barge after a general store and a yellow building is beautiful. Trees lining the bank of the canal, the ear canal. And as we get to the end of the barge, we see Loch Ellos SK Canal like a red barn, a steeple of a church time. It looks to be 11 a.m. because the sun's out, it could be 11 p.m., but that would be confusing. And there's maybe even a large ca- log cabin there with an A. Possibly a Bruce, blue spruce, but I don't know much about trees either. But it looks like there's an A. Decent amount of blue spruce, spruce type trees. This beautiful Neros by Kelly Cruz's C U R Y. Maybe I'll learn about this today. Good luck, swampy area. On the banks, swampy areas, red lily looking flowers. There's another mural here on the back of a brick building. So what do you call it? A cutaway? So it's like we're looking into the building. It's two stories. Presumably it's the general store. Actually, there's a sign. I'll read it. And uh, the second floor looks to be stored. Just man looking out the window with a view with some bags in an A. Cart to move the bags. There's a third floor. Some couple of people going up the stairs of the third floor. There's a closet. It looks like under the stairs. There's two men using a block and tackle to move heavy bags. On the first floor, looks like a mural was made by Corky Goss. Geo says in 1989, a moment on the Erie Canal, a man filling the feed bag. Looks to be some sort of telegraph, maybe. A few barrels. Cobblestone street out the window. A man in overalls. Hash, cash, big gash. A red handkerchief in his pocket. He's at the, I guess, like a bar, but it's where the register is the counter. I think they call those things the general store. And there's a woman with her back to us in a green dress, red hair, and a ponytail. I don't know what they called them in those days, but she seems to be filling in an order for them. We can see where hands are there below the counter, but there's bags and pots and pans and rolling pins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven rolling pins, and a black cat scratching itself on a barrel. There's a chair next to a wood stove, a heater, and a boy is a boy eating an apple, looking back at wi- at the woman at the counter, filling the order. It's a loud vehicle driving by. And then there's an open door to the store in a dock and a beautiful blue water, an imaginary Erie Canal, long gone. Because what I see is Erie Canal Street or Eori Street or Erie Boulevard, East Water Street, I think. I'm looking at Erie Boulevard East, but here's a little bit from the east side or the mural double-enders, buildings constructed on the banks because the canal had two distinct sides. One face, the canal, one the street, just to paraphrase it. And the street sides had facades to attract pedestrians, encourage carriages. The canal sides were simpler with an airy for loading and unloading cargo and goods. Ground floor was usually retail. Exception was a way like building its canal side was ornate to attract passing customers and canal boats. A two-story mural. Of this two-to-three mural was painted in 1989. And all these outdoor signs were made possible with gifts from Niagara Mohawk Power, which my Aunt Helen worked for. Money services from McDonald Foundation and EB, EUBA of the New York State. And right here, there is a spot of the way, like the building, which was built in 1950 to weigh canals and the judge. 
Oh, this is the junction of that area in the Oswego Canals. We like building was originally open like a boathouse, a shano in front of you. So we have a channel here. A recreation would guide the boat into the whaleback chamber. They have locked the gates at either end, and the water be drained through an underground tunnel. The boat would settle into a wooden cradle and get weighed. And each boat had an empty registered weight when it was empty. And then on the way, did find some maps to find out the weight of the cargo. The Syracuse Way, like building, is the only structure of its kind in the world. So sit on the National Register of Historical Places. And now it's the home of the Erie Canal Museum since 1962. And I'm looking at the front of the Waylock building. Maybe Waylock building, I think. Uh, now enclosed in glass, I see a recreation of a barge in the locks. And a few other things, but do some walking outside. I'm not sure if I get permission to record the episode inside, but it will be a mellow trip. Through Syracuse, New York, and an afternoon in Syracuse, New York. I'm here in the Erie Canal Museum in a newer section of the... Get the engineering and the building of the canal over time. You should really come here and check it out. It's a town that was built. The Erie Canal was considered an amazing engineering feat. It's 363 miles longer than any other canal in the world. 83 likes it, engineer, and 18 stone aqueducts. Even on point, it was called the Stitch. I'm sure we'll find we will find out more. But I'm going to Syracuse, and Syracuse, you're nearby, in this beautiful, beautiful museum. There's so much more. I don't even know where to start right now. I'm looking at some limestone from 1825, hand to. You know, what's a beautiful to you, and it's from the Lower Walk Crescent Aqueduct. You know that the Ear Canal was designed and built and financed by people in New York looking at what looks to be a wood. Could you just see the last Seneca River Aqueduct it was a sturdy one stone arches Seneca River Aqueduct? It was also known as the Richmond Aqueduct. It was the second largest canal system when it was completed in 1859. You can hear the sounds of the museum by me. And with opening a barge canal, many of the uh, guests, I missed the part about the tow canal. There's a change in here from being towed by horses to being towed by tugboats, larger, heavier barges. Now, here's a little bit of it from 1918 to 59. It's 40 years operation, a barge canal teamed with traffic. Boats were filled with, well, cargo, other beautiful factoid, here commerce. And that was Erie Canal near its peak in 1800. Six million tons of freight, so successful. Well, here's a, here's a conundrum. So successful in New York stopped uh, collecting Can It Help Souls in 1883. And here's the place. Assuming where someone made an uh, assumption out of you and me, assuming the use uh, it would continue to grow, Canal supporters sought to enlarge the big ditch once again and to compete with the growing use of ra- railroads. A mixed a considerable controversy with the backing of then Governor Uador Roosevelt uh, built a, a bill to build, and it's hard to say. It was now called the Burj Canal, and I asked, uh, and 15 years later, the canal system reached 800 miles of waterways. 40 dams, 309 bridges, and 57 locks. Over its success was short-lived as railroads and highways assumed a greater role in freight. You could see here maps sold, or maps New York, where they mapped the canal and the cities that travel through Buffalo, Tonawanda, Lockport, Dina Alby, and Rochester Genesee Falls. We could meet up with Genesee Valley and Canal Leones uh, at some point with me. He was a kid you couldn't say you get in Seneca Canal, which would go down to Seneca Lake, and you go to Lake. 
It would have had the through lines of all the winds, vile, canal, Seneca River, Topaz. Yes, canal into the Great Lake, if we can, Terrio, the Oneida Lake, all through Syracuse, New York, off to Rome, meet up with the river canal through Utica. So the Shango Canal through Herkimer and Little Falls, Thanda, and Amsterdam, Schenectady, Troy, and Albany, where we meet up with the Hudson River, or had no person in the Champlain River, all the way to Lake Champlain. Wow, what an amazing thing to know. There are lots of places it's gone now with all these aqueducts, and this is history. I've never been to this museum. It's a little humbling. I can now do these wonderful things. You hear fireworks, presumably to celebrate the opening of the canal, keeping it following the engineer's plan. Now we're learning on the job, and basic physics told them they now had to have a certain amount of slope for the water to fall. Basic physics told them the canal had to have a certain amount of slope for the water to flow. That's hydraulic capacity. And many personal engineers designing a slope of the canal to be one inch per mile to ensure an adequate flow of water. And there's a little oil and water thing to demonstrate hydraulic capacity. This is really interesting. To keep a canal full of water requires a steady source of water. So to maintain that water, a canal. It was a hard water, would leak, go out through the bed and banks and, inf and frequent maintenance, and as the industries developed around the canal, corridor water was diverted to water power mills, factories, and the need for water grew as the canal got heavier and wider. Here's an interesting article saying the Niagara, Niagara Escarpment was the last major challenge seeking the engineers and was how to get the canal to the top of the Niagara Falls escarpment, the rock ridge that produces the Niagara Falls. Poor was one of the lowest points on the original side. It was the best location for an order to lift the canal, 65 blocks required from the top of the escarpment. A three-mile channel was blasted through solid limestone known as the Deep Cut. Before it was finished, 300,000 cubic yards of rock were moved. And there's drawings and recreations of how they did this as the Erie Canal Museum. Some here in the way-like section of the building, looking at the barges in blues and whites and pinkishes, you see a salmon color. Believe it or not, there's windows. There's a man looking out a window. He's looking right at my waist and with a hand on his knee, and I don't know if I could get a better view into this album. Maybe you could be able to go inside and say this part of the museum. We have a recreation of the Manhattan Company Bank in partnership with Erie Canal and his description of phenomenal income that deposited into these banks. There are some beautiful models painted by hand by Jim Dixon of a packet boat. Good news, and then of New York State repair, repair skull. And here we are in the heritage part of the museum where you can hear some of Elizabeth Cotton's music. Elizabeth Cotton, you know, she became nationally famous for her contributions to America folk music and her style for playing the guitar upside down and left-handed. She's a lefty. She wrote tra songs like Freight Train Babe, No Lie, and Jumpin' Jack Elizabeth from Syracuse, New York, the pride of Syracuse New Yorkers who's played with groups from around the world. And I'm having a look here in the office, and when I look at one of the drawers here, oh, in his home drawer he has a Bible, and it looks like a bottle of whiskey. And he's going over some of the way logs. He's got his chest with his clothes from home, wood stove, and a checker coal heated coffee. Leisure time was scarce in the, these buildings uh, because it took 15 minutes away for a canal boat and our, our process needed, like tenders were the gates. While the way you master calculated the cargo, way suit was a busy job, so we always had coffee on time to play a game of checkers. And then we have played Descending the Steps. You might even hear my feet. It's a step down to the Erie Canal Bridge at the end. And I'm sure it's from the head or the boat coming up the stairs here. Attaboy, fishing off the roof of the canal barks. 
or some of these steamer trunks because this doesn't have a steam, but there's trunks on the roof. The canal boat barge and a couple of hooks, you know, hook stuff. Uh, and looks like there's a rudder here. So maybe I'm in the back of the boat. Yeah. Looked over the side and in the back of the boat was a tiller, the rudder. And now I'm having the honor of walking in down the stairs and inside the kitchen. I guess there's a wood stove. The table, canal, water, and whiskey canals are seen in their future in a lot of fiction and nonfiction books, just taking a peek at the back of the bathrooms here, which went right into the canal. Which, you know, that's not surprising at all, this wainscoting, because there's some beautiful decorations here. And one going into kitchen supplies. And now I'm heading into, I guess, the storage section of the canal. A lot of beautiful exhibits here. To see which came first, here's a question for you. How are the salt industry, other than for more than 20 years before the Erie Canal was constructed, salt was being produced by evaporating brine? The canal's low freight fees and enormous shipping capacity caused a boom in the industry. Syracuse, the great salt city, we know it was something and warms my heart. The canal's the stage for vaudeville shows, floating museums, missionaries, and circus performers. Wealth generated by the canal financed more refined entertainment as well as intellectual and spiritual pursuits. Opera houses, theaters, libraries, churches, rebuilt schools, including Syracuse University and the County Historical Society Station, were founded in Syracuse and so held the first day fair in 1840 and still does every August. And here I am in the bunkhouse. The woman has her eyes closed and seems to be listening to music or relaxing. She gets some knitting in a basket in her lap. There's three tiny bunks, as you know. And now this uh, Calabalos uh, traveled through the night while the passengers slept. Wooden canvas bunks were hung in the evening, and if the night was hot, some passengers would sleep on the floor rather than a stuffy upper berth. Well, sir, we get into a mustachioed man looking out the windows. He really looks like one of those performers, you see, that are doing the robot dance with a whistle. They give me. He's not moving. Hopefully he won't know I'm lucky enough to be standing in front of the canal boat time to dream. Passengers are free to pass the time as, as long as they wish uh, as they stayed on the cruiseway on the deck. They might read, watch the countryside go by, or hop off and stop and walk a few miles. Or try their hand at fishing as a boy I saw above. Does this boy, Donald Dio, any present at the museum in 1986, like, by the way, the Gilda's commemoration of the children? 1800s and contributed to the growth of the United States. And then you'll hear I'm stepping off this lovely boat. Excuse me, boat, I didn't catch your name. I'm on the second floor of the museum here. We're going to some beautiful, beautiful exhibits, Syracuse Stage, the Guild Theater. We're backstage, and this gift was by the main... By the way, Guild, composed of volunteers who support the museum through programs and financial support. Syracuse thrived commercially. Its cultural life flourished. Important cargo ship uh, to the Erie Canal was entertainment, as we said earlier. Circuses, your troops, and magicians for vaudevillians. Circus was a must-play city anyway. And Charles Dickens of Buffalo Bill Cody, the Waiting Opera House, the Bostable Theater, Many of the large local theaters destined for Broadway were pre 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 previewed. And uh, those are places that places like the electrical, light, and telephone were demonstrated to an excited and interested public. Sounds like a Kickstarter as Landmark Theater is still on some wine street. One of the last great movie palaces was spent painstakingly restored its gilt in gesso interior showcases live performances. There's also the Mulroy Civic Center with three theaters and a building with offices and many other things in this exhibit here. The backstage exhibit from the Masonic Temple on Montgomery Street is also a recreation of the Farmer and Trader's General Store. 
If we don't have it, you don't need it. Stores were showcases for commodities and places where commerce and transportation would come together. During the 2003, 1800 had a wide variety of goods for road, rail, and canal transportation. Dry goods, medicine, meat, bread, milk, eggs, Syracuse, or general stores evolved grocery stores and department stores and household goods and circuses for shopping district. I grew up in Hanover Square, just a few steps away from the Erie Canal, but just taking a walk along the shelves, we see a couple of lanterns. Junkus slumped in stereo. One of those things where you'd look at the pictures and no clue is pretty accurate surf to stethoscope. And I believe there's a couple of boxes of soap and jar cod fish cigars. Iron shoe is the elastic underwear. Children's shoes, fans, bolts of fabric. Spools, this red jello, a creative jello. Well, I didn't even know they had jello back then. Sheps, coconut. I don't know what that is. It's used in first-class families, according to The Sun. James Bernard Ground Pepper. That's the best sales soda, national roasted coffee cake. Uh, half the Royal Dutch Coffee Rosebow Coffee. Every so young and later be celebrated. It's Douglas's Gloss Starch Majoris Time Cooking Herbs Orphan Tobacco. Like he strikes Dr. Leanest as air a powder, eye cases spraying in mint carbonundrum, or random cutting materials carbonundrum. One of this is one of, that's one of the best things they were trying to get in. They have it or carbonundrum, and they use carbonundrum's Parker's charge. I need a box. Give me two boxes of that. Higgins zinc assorted chalk crayons. Yeah, you know, sir, and you don't care, what's the price of a Packers Germans? Does it come with a warranty for me? Okay, thank you. Next door is a pottery shop, where pottery has been hard at work with some small vases or vases. Oh, boy. The tavern is here. Bar Latos Tavern Registers. It's a national cash register. Beautiful registers about purchase, but I can keep moving. Syracuse Daily Journals open at the side of the bar with a fiddle and a painting of a really sailing ship. And let me end our day at the Erie Canal Museum. My day in Syracuse, New York. Thank you. And I want to say good night. This is where my dog is passing a petition by saying your nights and agree with you in that statement. We should get more broccoli. So I guess she is just trying to give you the right amount of broccoli, you know. Go and whatever. Go when you think everyone is saying this. In Twitter, Joanna Molly Jelly, my there is. There's Gareth's journalist in AM Caroline Bed Kitty in a four by four Amy's. Patrick, do we use the L to the AM to the C? That's old semi bolted. Has the married you? Nadine, you see her whole life. Thank you, everybody, for signing this. Uh, good night, Fairby. Assigned to Verco Stacy, go, go. With spread fair day. And really supportive of Coach Brackley, says, Bradford is old, Chris. You see, which is, I think you, Kate T, Kim H., Tiffany Foe, active in Fern Girl, when all the Broadway, world-famous Broadway and Danforth received a better show. There's a cool YouTube animation, a dance show, Kiki vs. Everyone. Phoenix, Sunrise, everybody, Jane, thank you. Kowar, uh, really got a bit of overbore, and of course the Laris team. The more Brackley, Rico, Caroline with Gavin, and then the lady which breeds Gerardo. They run a robo corn brewery. Wacko really did good. Lars, Lars the dude who thinks, who thinks dogs should get more broccoli. 
Jace is still th- said Jennifer was a C. David A. Wow. She was done well, Gina Key. All divine and best we have. Where to be like Babs arrowed for Mrs. Paw Prince. Bad cast on one rainy wish when you're really going well, disco, as well in school or our old friend Scaturo. It's me, you know. Surely. Divine or Devon? Both scientists believe in Mary or J. Carey or good old Kotex. Uh, Kim C. Amanda, Reed recommended the world famous Kim C. Lovely. Me and our go get we all are. For Jack, referable. We are a friend of old the Tonys. Vanessa, read the land of Rose and IG. May she soar and Casey and dystopian to the K. The last two Petra Bakery H's, W, U, Homer, Howman, Kelly, Ellis, and so on. So good night, everybody from Scooter and I. And, uh, you know, maybe you'll hear other versions of this. I don't really know. Uh, I don't know what he's got planned, but uh, who knows? Uh, good thanks and good night, everybody. All right, I want to thank everybody who supported the show recently uh, on Patreon, Liz, Marge, and Margo. Thank you. Thanks, 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 and good night. Derek, John, and Daly. Thank you. Thanks, 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 and good night. Jen, Alexander, and Mike. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Nicole, Allie, and Peggy. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Layla, Laura, and Marcia, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Aspen, Carolyn, and Sharon, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Gary, Patty, and Stephen, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, thanks, everybody, who supports the show directly. That's how it exists as a free podcast and come out twice a week as people that support the show on Patreon or support our sponsors. And the Ways We Grow's podcast is by people just uh, sharing their natural experience with the podcast, letting people know about it. Huge way to uh, support the show as well. I really appreciate that. Thanks, thanks, and good night, everybody. And here's a talk you in sponsor or Scoots asking for something. Thanks.